sexy. Two egg. Your mind, it is like a gun. And you want to load it up with little itty bitty bullets of knowledge. What's going on, family? It's your guy, Boro, the Lucky Libra, and thank you for tuning in to another episode. And as you can see by the title, family, we getting into this Mercury retrograde energy, all right? I want to have you guys understand what exactly a retrograde influence is going to bring into our lives, what to expect, how to spiritually prep, all right? I like how that rhymed. May have to just make that my slogan. So let's get right into it. So Mercury retrograde in Aquarius. What is Mercury? First of all, Mercury is the tool the chakra the planet that we use as spirits to deal with how we critically analyze think use the higher the higher parts higher organs you know of our system of our bodies how we able to intellectualize things deal with the thought break it down and communicate it to others all right wherever mercury's at in your uh chart this is an area like you're very analytical about you may overthink a lot in this area of life you see a lot of details in this area like you're really curious about this area of life especially how things work in this area of life you could be real relatable and communicative and talk about this area of life a lot this area of life influence how you communicate so when we look at mercury is in aquarius so with mercury being in aquarius for these past couple of weeks we've been dealing with a lot of energies you know aquarius is fixed air ruled by saturn co-ruled by uranus so aquarius is Saturn deal with reality, structure, practicality, making sense of things, rules, time, discipline, organization. Uranus is dealing with individuality, all right, but can be rebellious, opposing, because it's very erratic, all right? It's the energy dealing with trying to cultivate what makes it unique, and we go through a lot of transformations trying to uh, develop our uniqueness in this lifetime. So this energy influencing fixed air, aka a consistent and fixed way of dealing with how you think and communicate this is what makes aquarius is real opposing and rebellious this is what makes them real revolutionary like because the thoughts and the way they express themselves could be real individual but so it could be in real enlightening helps us deal with different perspectives of how to think and view things but at the same time it could be that opposing it could be that different and that's what makes aquarius is you know separated from the group and helps us to understand how we have to be individuals and think of things individually so mercury has been in aquarius aka we've been having the minds of aquariuses for the past couple of weeks we've been having different ways of thinking about our relationships we, we've been wanting to express our individuality more we've been wanting to de be more detached from our relationships to analyze them without being more without being so emotionally invested because once again Aquarius is the water bearer so when we look at the water we want to look at that as emotion a vibration and Aquarius is, is in is in control of how they deal with the emotion the, the man is representation of logic all right thought and the man is pouring the emotion out so it's having an overall perspective a bird's eye perspective of how to deal with the emotions that's why Aquarius is, can come off super logical and detached and cold at times especially with the Saturn influence all right so this is where our minds have been at. We've been in a state of feeling like we have to be a little bit more isolated from others to develop more of an individual thought. The way we've been communicating to others probably been a little bit more impulsive, sarcastic, all right? We may have been communicating differently to others, experimenting with different relationships or different ways of communicating and associating our ideas and what we're creatively into to others as well. With Mercury and Aquarius, our minds have been on our relationships a lot. And what's the reality of our relationships? So, a lot of different ways of strategizing how we relate to others with this Mercury and Aquarius energy. Now, it's retrograde. When we're dealing with retrogrades, if any planet that's retrograde, this is an energy that is in a revision state. A redoing state. Alright? Replaying that re-energy all right that's what we're dealing with retrogrades from our perspective where we're at in this solar system in this part of the solar system here on earth or whatnot 
it looks like planets are going backwards when they're retrograde, but necessarily they're not. That's just how it comes off from this perspective. But all planets in retrograde, they're in a state of, you know, rehabilitating and going through their, you know, their tune-up process with their spiritual travels. All right, so just like how we all have our downtime, or we may all have to be in a state where we get to have our time to reflect and see what we have going on in our lives, boom, 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 to see what we've accumulated, to see what experience we gained and how we're gonna continue to utilize it, just like how basketball, football games have half time. Yeah, the planets need their half time too. The planets need their, their time to hit the drawing board because just like how we're stars here, how we're many planets experiencing the world, when we talk about the sun in Aquarius and the moon moving here, they're moving, they're living, they're experiencing things. So with Mercury in Aquarius, everything that we've been thinking about, everything that all the new ideas that we've been implementing, especially the different ways we've been communicating to others, the ways we've been communicating our individuality, the different ways we've been utilizing technology, social media, which, so, which Aquarius rules. All these new things we've been doing with Mercury and Aquarius, all these things about to come back to us right now. AKA, we about to see how these things, the results of them, you know, with Mercury and Aquarius, the, uh, the mind has been on what makes you different from others. So we may have expressed certain things, whether in an impulsive nature, you know, whether in a sarcastic nature, whether from a, you know, detached, emotionally detached nature, we may have expressed or acted in certain ways in the past couple of weeks that created certain situations with our relationships. So now a lot of these situations are about to come back in certain ways for us to understand what that new way of communicating, what that new way of dealing with your relationship, what result that really produced or what does that, sh or what it shows you about how you're, how you feel like communicating to others. Aquarius deals with technology and communication, all forms of communication, but it definitely highlights technology. So the reason why there is a lot of fucking fuck ups with technology and, you know, simple technical things and whatnot and time management, but specifically technology and whatnot, because when we look at Mercury, like the actual matter and pieces of Mercury are, you know, substance that is used for forms of technology or whatnot. So that even being part of the energy that's aligned with technology, when it goes retrograde, you know, that's gonna start tweaking a bit. So one thing that we could always do to spiritually prep ourselves for Mercury retrograde is make sure that we honor time management. And I've been saying this since coming into 2021. I said, universe is going to see how much you value time management. All right, me personally, guys, like I'm a Capricorn moon, Capricorn rising, but I have a debilitated Saturn in my first house. So a lot of my, uh, a lot of my life path in this lifetime is dealing with how to really master, you know, organization, routine and structure. All right. So, you know, me, myself, I get overwhelmed with, you know, not being able to max out the way I want to max out my schedule. But it's like when I say value and time management, guys. For a lot of us, we've been trying to max out and we've been realizing how much either responsibilities or work that we haven't been able to get done on top of us working hard. So we're really getting a way more uh, of a realistic approach to what time, what the fuck time is with all this heavy Saturn energy, valuing time, seeing what you accumulated with your time, the time you've put into your relationships, that's heavy with all these Aquarius energy. So Mercury retro going retrograde, we about to receive a whole lot of what we've been expressing, connecting to and acting to in our relationships. So with this energy, we're gonna be experiencing this energy, Mercury retro been retrograde for the past for the past two days now. Alright, and we're gonna be experiencing this all the way up to uh February 20th. Okay. Once again this is a revised redo energy. Now, Mercury is also the fastest planet, all right, in the solar system and is also the closest planet to the sun. So, with it being the fastest planet, you have to understand that this is the energy that we use the most, damn near. Since it moves that fast, our thoughts, we think the fact, we, our thoughts is always going like this. 
Mercury is the fastest moving planet, so this is why when it goes retrograde, uh, energy that we use so quick, so much, that is heavily stimulated, our thoughts, this is not a time to just articulate yourself so quick, express yourself so quick, push out what's in your head so quick. Because we in retrograde time, it's time to revise and redo and take your goddamn time before you speak some shit out your head. Because you might be talking some bullshit at this time. <laughs> Especially with it in Aquarius. With Mercury being Aquarius, we already having more more emotionally detached ways of communicating from, communicating to others. More realistic ways of dealing with others. Alright? More different ways of communicating to others. A People switching up right now in their relationships. People switching up right now in their relationships. So, especially when we hit this Venus conjunct Pluto shit. So, right now, this is not the time. This is too much impulsive energies in the air right now for us to just feel like we could just speak whatever, communicate whatever. Especially with Mercury going retrograde in Aquarius. And you're about to see the results of how you may have communicated. Uh, like I said, the things you may have communicated and expressed to others this past month or whatnot, you about to see the effect of that in your relationships. So prep yourself for that family, okay? But with Mercury being that fastest planet, the tool that we use the quickest, the most, being our thoughts, how we think about things, that's why it's not a time to rush that because we already do it like this. So now that we in retrograde time, Take your this how we this how we turn retrograde times into fruitful periods because it's a reflective time so if you take the time to reflect on this area of life that it's at which we're gonna get into if you take your time to articulate yourself or how you connect or act in this area of life this is going to help you to have way more clarity about things when Mercury goes direct. This is this is how we always want to look at retrograde periods. Once again, this is half time of an energy. So when it's half time, you're, you and your team, you preparing to dominate the second half. You preparing to dominate the rest of the game. All right. You take you using half time. So when you go direct second half, you can you can compete. You can act. You can execute with more clarity. So we that's how we turn this motherfucking retrograde into a fruitful time. Will there be will there be mental confusion? Yes. Will there be mental frustration? Yes. Will there be a lot of stupid technical bullshit to deal with? Yes. So what? We're gonna move through it. We're gonna deal with it day by day and we're gonna put ourselves in a space to be to be able to see these things outside the body, to be able to see what shit means, to be able to see why we're getting frustration dealing with certain things and why we gotta re-strategize in this certain area. When you're dealing with retrograde periods, whenever you're dealing with friction or something you're dealing with mental frustration with, and it's not let's say it's something that's not like a technical issue, like something in your a personal issue or relating to somebody, this is a you gotta understand, you gotta look at that situation like, okay, restriction, resistance. What, what the fuck this mean? What universe trying to tell me? I've been forcing it or whatever. I got to re-strategize how I do things. Yeah. That's how you should look at, every, at everything in life. Like, you got to force that shit. Now, nothing great in life comes without, you know, working for this shit. So anything come overnight ain't shit. So I ain't saying just give up. But yeah, I understand what I'm trying to say. Like, when you just, you know catching that subconscious influence of you forcing something you're not not even you working trying to build a goal or pursue career endeavor or whatnot like you just forcing a situation you forcing aligning with somebody you forcing your way into it into a certain company or whatnot like family you got to read the subconscious universal signs to let you understand that you forcing your energy somewhere where it's not welcome and it's being you know heavily resisted and uh you know this type of energy is really going to help us to understand how we may have did that in previous situations. Now, I just want to make sure I get out the critical points. Okay. So, yeah, another thing about Mercury and Aquarius is, remember, Aquarius represents the unknown and unfamiliar. The unknown, uh, the 
you know, parts of the world and the environments you're unfamiliar with, you haven't connected to people you haven't connected to. Uh, Aquarius dealing with that 11th house energy, which is the abstract world. So with Mercury and Aquarius, we already been, Mercury and Aquarius brings very high thoughts, very abstract thoughts, out the box thoughts. So this is why we've been seeing so many different ways to look at things. But now with Mercury going retrograde, now is the time for us to get a little bit back grounded mentally to, to take some of these ideas and see, okay, which one of these high ass ideas is actually going to get come down to reality and how do I strategize them? So this is another thing, like another uh, type of theme to keep in mind with the retrograde, all right? So let's get into the houses so you guys can understand what areas of life this energy is going to be taking place. So let's get right into it. Aquarius Risings. All right. This is the first house. So right now you guys are going to be in a space where you guys are going to be seeing the mistakes and you're going to be seeing the results about how you've been trying to personally associate yourself with certain people and who you've been personally trying to detach from. Where Aquarius in the first house, you're already a personal isolated type of person personally detached type of person you real relatable but you could be picky and choosy about how you deal with people places and things in your personal life because you don't like people all up in your space and you don't like personally getting emotional attached so with for that for uh with that being said you know there's been new ways that you've been thinking about associating yourself personally and connecting yourself to people personally and about how you personally express yourself so right now you got to see uh all all of what's been accumulated from what you've been doing per in your personal life this may be a time right now where you really going to want to be personally isolated be to your own thought right now and be able to connect to yourself and what you got going on personally with it going retrograde because you in a state you in a state of feeling like you know you got to cater more to more you've been feeling like this with mercury in the first house so now you're just going back and re-step um you know retrieving your steps on the things that you've personally acted on. And you're gonna also see what personal ideas that you've had about how to personally express yourself. You're gonna see which one of them things you wanna detach from or don't come off as strategical, all right? Now, second house, Capricorn Risings. Right now, you guys are gonna find ways to be reorganizing the people, places, and things that you value. You're gonna be very critical about the people, places, and things that you value, and you have to be real conscious about how you express yourself to the people, places, and things that you, the people that you value. And, you know, when it comes to certain new, uh, certain new, the value you feel like you have to offer to the world, all right, the things that you've been planting seeds in, the things that you've been uh, working on, your forms of income, how you making money right now, you're gonna be in a state of re-strategizing what's really working the most effectively right now and how you can uh, continue to associate with people, places, people, places, and things that you value right now. Like, you're gonna be seeing tweaks to these things, all right? Second house is dealing with monetary gains, career, all right, our forms of security in the physical realm. So a lot of these things are going to be re-strategized. You're going to be seeing more details to how you may have made mistakes connecting to the wrong people, places, and things that you value and how to do these things more efficiently. So be open to signs from the universe, signs from the universe and whatnot that's helping you understand these things. Sagittarius rising, house three. Now with Mercury transiting, uh... Your third house, Mercury, is home here. So it could be really overstimulated. You could be real open to how you're relating to others right now. The third house deals with familiar, all people, places, and things that's familiar to you, familiar forms of information, uh, your local environment, your neighborhood, your siblings is an air house. So it's dealing with relationships overall and communication. So Mercury loves that air shit, especially the third house where it's home at, the house that gave birth to Gemini. So you're going to be in a state right now of feeling real relatable, feeling like you got to uh, find different things. Well, it's retrograde, so you're going to be seeing the results about how you've been trying to relate what you're working on with, you know, your familiar friends. Right now, you may be in a state of, you may have expressed some things with Mercury in the third house to certain uh, friends and siblings in the past month that came off a little too uh, harsh a little bit. And some of them results might be coming back, such like issues with familiar people that were negative issues that didn't get handled these things is coming back right now in the third house um and you're also going to be developing new ways of how you could be involved with you know involved what you got going on within your community or your familiar surroundings right now you just got to be real conscious right now how you articulate yourself to to close friends 
to siblings and all that right now. You got to take your time dealing with these situations. You got to take your time dealing with uh, text messages and, and all forms of communication with Mercury Retrograde in Aquarius in the air house. Yeah, you got to be careful here, okay? Because you could be real open for opportunities to connect with others. So what you relate on the mind and how you deal with others right now could lead to all different type of situations, all right? All of us got to take our time with how we communicate ourselves So communicate. But a lot could be going on in your familiar surroundings that help you to have more of a realistic approach of how you deal with your relationships. So you don't want to add on right now while you're realizing things about your friends, while you're realizing things about your familiar surroundings, where you live, your neighbors, your, your relatives, your siblings. The more you add on, the more it's, it's going to, uh, you know, block what is for you to see during this retrograde period so you could work on now scorpio risings house four right now the mind could uh the fourth house i said house four like uh, motherfucking like it's a marathon and i'm naming motherfuckers to race next all right house four to the uh house four to the line like all right anyways i know i'm corny fourth house so when we dealing with the uh fourth house energy we know we're dealing with you know how we create emotional stability, how we deal with the family and home environment, our private space, private energies, the heart chakra area. So with the uh, Mercury going retrograde here, you're about to be revising different ways to communicate and relate to others in the home. Your mind could be heavy on the emotions here, so don't allow yourself to sink and drown into the emotions because your mind already been heavy on how you feel about things, about people, places, and things you care about. With, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, with Mercury already being in this fourth house, uh, you know, once again, Aquarius in the fourth house, the family home environment could be isolated, detached. So with Mercury here, it could be developing a lot of ideas about how to, uh, you know, navigate your individuality within the within the family, which could create more transformation and uh, power and control issues, but uh, different strategies to connect with others. Bring more structure to your family home environment. Both of them situations can bring power and control issues in the home. All right. So for the most part, the mind is on this area, re-strategizing, re, uh, seeing how you've been taking action or communicating things to people, places, and things you care about. You're going to be in a state where utilizing solitude and privacy right now can help a whole lot to really help you feel um to well to help you decipher your thoughts from your feelings because your mind gonna be on your feelings a lot heavy so when the mind is thinking about its thoughts it could expand on the emotion that wasn't even there in the first place by the way you give focus to it so you don't want to make sure you continue to do that uh scorpio risings with mercury going retrograde here but a lot of situations from the home could backlash and backfire from the past month and a half a lot of things you may have expressed to people places and things you care about and this could, this could also retrograde energy in the fourth house mercury retrograde could disrupt it'd be a little invasion of privacy disrupt your sense of, of a comfort zone this next uh transit so you want to be mindful of that you know try to see the situation from a bigger broader perspective of how you may have created a situation that brought something in to your private space and now you got to see how to deal with that energy with the mercury transit in your fourth house person place or thing that you brought into your private space now you're struggling getting comfortable now you're struggling dealing with your comfort zone and dealing with solitude now you feel like you got an invasion of privacy now you got somebody always ringing your phone because you created some type of responsibility or something you you connected to or expressed with the mercury being in your fourth house already so it's time to re-strategize them things scorpio risings libra risings all right fifth house with the moon here i mean the moon mercury that m with mercury here you guys are going to be uh you know really influenced on how you deal with expressing yourself but on all levels positive negative curious analytical critical you know a real relatable so you got to be careful how you communicate or how you communicate to others how you feel like you're dealing with certain things with your expression never know who could be taking advantage of your vulnerability libra risings you know you're really open with how you communicate but when you got a Aquarius in the fifth house sometimes you could be a little bit too uh you know, Aquarius doesn't want to just, uh, it's like the way you express yourself comes off really different, really, really, uh, a, a, in a positive way, original, but could be very different and separate to others. And you could deal with 
having to feel like what's wrong with you to align with your relationships with liberalizing like what's wrong with me i'm just trying to be relatable with, with that aquarius in the fifth house the way you express yourself at times be very different so right now your mind gonna be on uh you like you're gonna be trying to see the mistakes which are not mistakes it's just how you naturally express yourself but your mind is going to be seeing why don't be resonating the way you want to resonate at times how to deal with your creative artistic expression at times how to align universe wants you to see how to align your original forms of expression you know into ways that you could work on it you know into ways you could re-strategize it as far as you know how you deal with the spotlight the stage because the fifth house represents the stage how you gain attention or a light for how you creatively express what you're good at your talents into the world your creative attributes into the world so you're going to be re-strategizing how you could build that but you want to re-strategize in a way of understanding that you guys are unique and different with your form of creativity and y'all don't have to try to find ways to align with that express that express that unique original ways of uh different unconventional ways that you deal with your music forms of creativity and entertainment but it's retrograde so you're gonna be just you know seeing the details of these things seeing different ways to formulate it all right so this is what we're dealing with my libra risings virgo risings all right house six Mercury loves to be in this house. Mercury is exalted here. So when we're dealing with exalted, this is a place a planet loves to be in. It's godly energy, full strength, maximum strength here. But it also can exhaust itself because it goes so hard here, all right? So it's King Kong here, but when it sleeps, it sleeps hard. So it can knock out, all right? It could be, it, get, it could overwhelm itself here. So with great power come great responsibility. So when we got Mercury transiting the sixth house, the sixth house deal with your day-to-day -day routine, scheduling, organizing, how you see the details and critique your routine, how you deal with regiment, your diet, all right, your weekly, monthly regimen, how you deal with health and fitness, taking care of yourself in a consistent, routine manner. The workplace where you work at, this is an earth house, so it's dealing with forms of stability and how we develop that through routine and the pattern, uh, you know, that we continue to see the details of, analyze. That's why Mercury loves this motherfucking house. It wants to do this all day, every day. All right, it wants to see the instructions, how things work, how to put things together so people that got mercury in the sixth house mercury and virgo this is this is their minds naturally motherfucking intelligent and book smart know how to uh see how things aren't working in their schedule can fucking overthink like none other can deal with heavy anxiety but for the most part man very intelligent see the details to a lot of things see a lot of detail see details of things that people miss their minds can deal with intense intense uh mental stimulation things that need mental focus or whatnot their, their minds are equipped to deal with that type of shit this is why they can manifest into dealing with the medical field surgeons pharmacists uh dealing with things that take uh you know all of that motherfucking energy yeah best believe it you know uh engineering you know mathematicians scientists mercury scorpio mercury six house give me all of that give me all those careers throw all that in there <laughs> So when we dealing with um, my Virgo risings with Mercury transiting the sixth house right now is like you're gonna uh, in retro going retrograde though you're about to see a lot of the mistakes and a lot of the errors that are gonna be developed as results from you not scheduling organizing things in a right way in a disciplined way and not uh, you know when it comes to the things that you already had wisdom about. That you should be scheduling and working on you about to see the effects of that shit right now with with the mercury going six uh retrograde here and mercury pick up on the details of everything so you're gonna be seeing the details of all of that shit you're gonna be overthinking more about what you're seeing so you so you got to be careful here because not only are you going to be seeing so many details about what you haven't been scheduling and working on you're gonna be well, not only you're going to be seeing details about how you express yourself and you act in the work workplace and how people act and express themselves and relate themselves in the workplace it's like you gonna see these things and you may overthink on top of that because mercury overthink here mercury want to see the details and add on and see different perspectives and see how things work and read the instructions and do all that motherfucking technical intelligent thinky thinky shit so with mercury here you got to be careful to just make sure you see where you know you've been slacking with your schedule with how you've been taking care of yourself your regimen all right you know your diet Things that affect your nervous system, your sleep, your rest. You want to see the details of them things and you want to get on it. You want to make sure when Mercury go direct, these things is in order. You want to make sure all that funny money business at work or things that you, responsibilities or situations you may have created by expressing yourself a certain way. With Mercury here, you want to make sure that uh, 
you know, you understand how you created some of these responsibilities or these situations, how you could pre prevent certain clashes based off how you express yourself. And it's going to develop a lot of ideas here. Excuse me, y'all. Mercury changed in the sixth house being retrograde. You're going to be able to recalculate a lot of ideas about things about the workplace. You know, how to transition what you're doing at work. How to how to deal with what you're working on. The sixth house deal with what you're working on. Not just the workplace, but what you're working on in the day-to-day -day routine. So you're going to be able to, you know, tweak all of that. Tweak all of these things. We just don't want to super overthink once we realize what we haven't been working on. Just make note of that. Boom. How do we how do we re-strategize it? All right, let's implement this way. Boom. Let's see how that works. Six house. Continue to see the details of it. Continue to work it. Continue to structure it. All right. Seventh house. Now with Mercury transiting in the seventh house, we know the seventh house, this is my Leo risings. We know the seventh house deals with how we connect to others on a one-on-one -on -one level. The seventh house is opposite from our personal house, so it's going to always show us ourselves through our relationships. All right, opposites attract, so that's why we learn a lot from our seventh house energy, because it's going to be a frequency vibration that's going to be, uh, you know, within all of our, uh, most of our relationships that we connect to in the external realm, how we deal with people, places, and things on a one-on-one -on -one level in the external realm. So right now, uh, with Mercury retrograde transit in this house, you guys are about to see a lot of the uh, mistakes and a lot of the errors when it comes to the things that you may have communicated to your partner, some of the decisions that you may have uh, wanted to you took action on, you know, with all these Aquarius energies, Aquarius season, Mercury and Aquarius, you know, when it comes to your relationships right now, you guys are about to have, uh, be in a state where, you know, you're going to be developing different ways to feel like how you got to connect to others. When it comes to your relationships though, because it's heavy air energy now, but we're dealing with one-on-one -on -one connection. So this is why the Sun House has an emphasis on your romantic, intimate relationships. This is a time where you definitely don't want to, you know, quickly, impulsively express anything to your partners. You want to be an active listener as much as possible with Mercury retrograding your seventh house. Because you're about to manifest a lot of situations that's about to come back from your relationships and your partners anyways. You about to realize how you was attached, connected, or relating to the wrong person or the right person anyways. Anyways, you gotta see the real substance of your relationships. Universe is gonna help you to see what you gotta work on with your relationships, whether it's the way you've expressed yourself or the way you've allowed others to treat you on a one-on-one -on -one level. The person you're dating, the person you're in a relationship with, you know, the relationship, one-on-one -on -one relationship between you and your mother, one-on-one -on -one relationship between you and your child, one-on-one -on -one relationships of all levels. It's time to re-strategize and see the details, how you may have been wrong or how you may have been done wrong in this area of life. All right, be an active listener, okay? That's what we want to keep in mind, my Leo Risings. And y'all Leo Risings, you know, y'all already real personally expressive. Y'all want the light to be shined on y'all for things that, uh, you know, that you could personally uh, enlighten the world on. You know, you want that spotlight because you feel like it's deserving. <laughs> you feel me? You feel like, shit, I'm just, I'm, yeah, I be having a bunch of people personally hate on me for being personally different and expressive the way I am with my dynamic personal expression anyway, so... When you get into Aquarius in the seventh house, y'all be developing a lot of relationships where sometimes people try to kill y'all spirits, kill y'all egos or whatnot. You know, try to shoot y'all and like shoot y'all creativity down. Try to t try to tell y'all y'all too much in y'all feelings about things. Leo rising. So for the most part, with Aquarius in this house, you about to once again see more of the details to who's been doing you wrong, who's been shooting your spirit down right now, and and maybe and you're gonna be more detached from it. All right, as far as how you feel about things and be able to. See the reality of these things and how you've been, you know, adding on to these situations with your uh, relationships as well, Leo Risings. All right. Now, my Cap Risings, excuse me, Cancer Risings. Let me just make note of something real quick, y'all. Cancer Risings, Aquarius in the 8th house. 
So with Mercury transit going retrograde in the eighth house, you're about to see a lot of the errors and a lot of the things of how to re-strategize and see the details to your deep motives, deep deep passions, certain goals you have that you real motivated about. You be adding extra emotion and passion to this shit every day, but you haven't expressed it yet. People don't know about it. It's in the eighth house. It's still behind the scenes. You're gonna be developing new ways to see how. Well, you're gonna be developing new ways by seeing the mistakes and seeing the results of what has accumulated from your deep desires it get a little deep when we talk about mercury going retrograde in your eighth house because the eighth house deals with your desires so the eighth house deals with sex uh, transformation deep desires deep passions ulterior motives hidden agendas so a lot of things that you've been connecting to people places and things well let's say people a lot of people a lot of the people in relationships that you may have been dealing with offer the name of a desire sex lust this type of energy you may see some situations coming back right now from them situations you may see some people being more emotionally connected than you thought but it was just off a of desire with this type of energy uh uh cancer risings uh with mercury going retrograde in this area it's gonna help you to see how you've how you didn't strategize certain things the right way when it came to expressing your emotions or working on a certain passion or goal that you have as, as well mercury retrograde is also gonna help you to see how uh you know you can utilize the the resources of the people that you know you're connected to that you relate to because apos deals with shared resources so you know in a way you may have been taking advantage of some resources that's given to you and you if you catch influences of saying that yeah you be doing too much then you know you got retrograde energies in the eighth house trying to help you to understand like all right put it put it put you better transform that habit you 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 doing too much all right but mercury in this eighth house the mind could also be on the, in the deep emotion here so just like how i was saying mercury in the fourth house you don't want to expand the emotion or expand how you feel about things by having the mind on it heavy make sure you don't do that with this transit as well because you're going to be reflecting and seeing a lot of details about how you expressed a lot of things or, or heavy emotion on others you may be expressing the mind going to be heavy on a lot of things in the past about things that you experienced that impacted the emotions the mind is going to be on a lot of things that you have behind the scenes whether it's secrets or things you haven't expressed to the world yet and you may be overthinking how you're going to express these deep passions or how you're going to cultivate them to the world so don't let the mind uh sink you too deep into how you feel about things but um definitely gonna be able to put yourself in a space where you can core uh you know reformulate how you deal with your motives and your passions and your deep desires and your heavy and and heavy emotion that may have been developed from certain transformative relationships situations impactful moments turbulent moments in your life you're about to see how to re-strategize and think about these things differently so you could once once mercury go direct you have more of a mental clarity of how you dealing with your passions how you dealing with your deep intentions how you dealing with your goals all right how you dealing with keeping certain things behind the scenes and what's not going to be behind the scenes no more all right so this is what we're dealing with cancer risings gemini risings mercury transiting the ninth house so the ninth house is dealing with the house of enlightenment all right we're dealing with the house of education all right we're dealing with faith belief religion travel foreign culture okay and new experiences new adventures so mercury going retrograde here you're about to be in a state where you're going to be revising and reflecting on the new adventures you've been thinking about wanting to go on or the new adventures and experiences you've been going through with Aquarius uh, in this um, in the ninth house with Aquarius in the ninth house. All right. You know, you get a lot of you manifest a lot of situations with Aquarius here where you're able to develop relationships to things that you're learning about or like things that you want to experience like you're able to develop relationships or have connections to people who can make that a reality so here you're about to re-strategize how you utilize your relationships in order to deal with things that you want to experience but the 12th the ninth house is the house of experiences is the house of education and mercury is uncomfortable here because mercury deals with information the technical things you know the mind on a left brain logical point of view ninth house is dealing with faith belief philosophy so right now our minds is going to be revising reflecting things that we've been learning in our experiences and we want to really be in a state of you know uh, this is a firehouse so you can be real expressive and the mind could be on a lot of creative things here but this also could influence you to be you know 
Mercury being in a firehouse, you having Aquarius here, you can articulate yourself from a real uh, standoffish, uh, real superior type of way. And you may have been doing that with Mercury transit in this house. So the results of these things may be coming back. A lot of spontaneous things you may have been doing with Mercury transit in ninth house. A lot of these, these things may be coming back right now. A lot of things you believed in with Mercury, people, places, and things that you believed in or you put faith in, you have faith in, or you have certain philosophies or uh, ethics and morals about. You about to realize all that shit bullshit. You about to realize you got to evolve from all of that. You got to you about to realize you have some false beliefs about some things. And you got to re-strategize how you think or perceive some things or what you've learned. And you have how you have to like that ain't the end or be or you got to evolve from the things that you learned or experienced with Mercury transiting in the ninth house, my Gemini Horizons. Now we got Mercury transiting the tenth house going retrograde, my Taurus Risings. So... The 10th house deal with our social status, how we broadcast ourselves to the world, how we gain stability or how we're able to rise to a status, a popularity status, a career status, a, 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 a relationship status. All right, when we're talking about status and the mid heaven energy in the 10th house. So with Mercury going retrograde in this house, um, my Taurus risings, this is a time to re-strategize how you communicate your personal values to the world. You know, as a Taurus rising, y'all gotta understand with Aquarius in the left, in the tenth house, y'all all have to learn how to communicate and come out your shell and be able to associate and network the things that y'all personally building or y'all personal values and beliefs. Y'all gotta be able to come out your shell, network and associate that with others some more with Aquarius in that uh, tenth house. And y'all gotta be able to uh, embrace what makes y'all different and individual when y'all get into that house. So with Mercury being retrograde here, a lot of ideas and the ways y'all been thinking about broadcasting yourself or the different things that y'all been trying to organize dealing with career, forms of stability, security, and social status, social media, how people see you, all of that been on the mind heavy and y'all been expressing and implementing certain things new ideas about these things so right now y'all about to see what's working y'all about to see if the ways that uh y'all was dealing with organizing how to broadcast yourself how to market something how to deal with this business into endeavor how people see you for the most part right now y'all about to be seeing what's working how to re-strategize these things you're going to be seeing the details and being more critical of your social status and you know your social media don't let that uh you know um the mundane aspects to how you're utilizing social media and technology be things that weigh heavy on your mind you want to utilize it more in a realistic point of view of how you can make help it you to utilize social media how you broadcast yourself along with a productive brand or what you're working on you want to re-strategize these things all right universe is going to be placing a, a lot of a lot of things is about to come back as results of things that you may have tried to do career-wise business-wise or uh a lot of things about your reputation that you may have not noticed you about to be uh you about to be reminded about these things you about to be universe about to continue to utilize a person place a thing for you to understand this is your social status or how people perceive you how you may be able to utilize this for business or your brain or what you're working on so this is what we want to keep in mind here uh mercury retrograde going in the 10th house for my taurus risings aries risings Mercury going retrograde in your 11th house. So the 11th house deal with the unknown, unfamiliar. This is the house that gave birth to Aquarius. This house is dealing with how we connect to horizons beyond what we're familiar with. How we put ourselves in environments to conduct, to uh, to connect to people we don't know. All right, how we place ourselves in 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 the unknown environments to learn things and experience things we never experienced before so with mercury going retrograde here this is a time where right now you about to be re-strategizing and seeing the details of everything that's been accumulated from you trying to express or connect to you know new environments you trying to deal with different ty types of forms of uh, social media and expressing yourself or how you've been dealing with trying to associate yourself with new groups deal with new relationships you about to see all the backlash of that. You about to see all the results of that. You about to see how you need to work on that. You about to see how you need to re-strategize your associations and organizations right now. All right, with Mercury going retrograde in the 11th house, there's gonna be a lot of situations where you know you may have developed some uh, associates 
and you wasn't quite understanding how this person fits into your life, Mercury going retrograde, you're going to be able, you're going to be able to uh, see where this person fits, where you put this situation at. All right. Uh, Aries risings, Mercury going retrograde in your 11th house as well. This is also a time for you to understand that, um, you know, not everybody that you're around is going to be able that th this is the type of energy for you to understand that people that are not personally connected to you or that you're not super familiar with like you may have to continue to embrace relationships and people outside of them familiar personal people personal relationships in order to build on certain things like a lot of them influences gonna come into your mind helping you understand how this person that you're not super connected to or this environment you're not super familiar with can actually be the things you need to get more integrated with you know in order to build and structure this reality so you're gonna have a lot of them things on your mind uh aries risings and you want to make sure that you are very patient and more of an active listener when you're dealing with people that you may be working with people in the workplace more associate business-like relationships uh you definitely want to keep that in mind be real patient with how you deal with these energies right now and last but not least my pisces risings okay we got aquarius transiting uh mercury going retrograde in that 12th house so with the 12th house 12th house deals with our subconscious energies all right our hidden talents our creative source our imagination our fantasies our illusions how we connect to the collective conscious karma life after death the dream world that's the 12th house so with Mercury going retrograde here, you about to be seeing all the mistakes and errors and ways you didn't or did effectively, uh, you know, try to implement your creativity or your imagination into the world. The 12th house deals with your imagination, but it's also a water house dealing with the emotions. So with Mercury transiting here, your mind has already been on what essence you feel you have within you dealing with your creativity, your imagination, your creative source, how to pull it out, how to connect it to others. You've been real observative, observative with Mercury transiting your 12th house, observing other people dealing with their talents, their gifts, you know, and it can may have also been making you overthink and build a little mental frustration with Mercury in the 12th house, you know, trying to find some clarity and a grounded level of how you look at your creativity. So right now with Mercury going retrograde, it's the time for you to start, start re-strategizing how you deal with your subconscious gifts, how you deal with your creative source, how you can deal with more ways of cultivating that and connecting that, how the ways you connected it and relating it wasn't effective or you doing it around the wrong people, associating what you're creatively into and your gifts and your dreams with the wrong people and you know more effective ways to do these things so by the time for my pisces rises by the time that mercury goes direct you're already in motion have way more clarity on how you're dealing with your imagination your dreams how you relating that emotion to others uh how you uh the percentage level of emotion you deal with in your relationships is going to be a whole new clarity of all how to deal with all of these energies new clarity how to deal with your creative uh attributes all right, so this is what we want to make sure we're revising, reflecting, but it's going to be a whole bunch of bullshit coming back to with situations dealing with people, places, and things you was emotionally connected to, especially ones that play out as escape mechanisms. The 12th house rule with escape mechanisms, how we tap out of reality. So certain people, places, and things, substances, relationships, people, places, and things that play out as loves, pleasures, fantasies, all of these things you may be overindulging or you may be uh, too connected to, over uh, over attached to, whatnot. You're going to be seeing the backlash and the, and the results of these situations as well. All right. So be spiritually prepped for universe to show you that. All right, family. So I just wanted to make sure I get through these Mercury retrograde energies for y'all to understand the influences we're going to be dealing with all the way up to the 20th. All right. With this energy, uh, there's already a lot of shifts going on uh, to start this week. So be very mindful that with these, you know, uh, uh, these areas of life that we have to reflect and revise and really see how to work on these things not rush do the homework on be patient be active listener this is how you spiritually prep yourself for mercury retrograde to utilize this time for it to be a, a productive halftime so we could you know we could compete at our highest level and finish the game strong 
all right family so you already know what it is man go ahead and visit my website to connect with the lucky libra and check the patreon where we're building our monthly classes you know deeper analysis and we're just doing a whole bunch over there all right so until next time family peace